Hello and welcome to the robot course. You probably don't have a robot and still want to learn how to use an industrial robot. And I will try to make the first baby steps to move a robot this episode. It's child's play to move a robot. But the hard part is moving the robot in the right direction. I have seen children move robots and they can do it, but in an industrial environment you you can't do move it the wrong way, you know. Well, I work with uh, robots to some extent and my colleagues have come in contact with robots and uh, have had to jog the robots in the, in the past. And uh, so when making this episode, I thought why not go out and ask them how they felt about uh, jogging a robot. And even the most most experienced operator uh, said that he wasn't really 100% comfortable because you always have a lot on stake when, uh, when jogging a robot. And a lot of things could go wrong. So it's only natural to not be 100% comfortable. But it could also lead to negative consequences when you're really not comfortable. And I got this answer from another colleague who told me this story. Me and my colleague had gone a basic course in robot, a bit like this one, I guess. We were cocky and thought we could jog the robot now that it had gotten stuck during a tool change. And instead of jogging it up from, uh, uh, from the tool, Instead, they jogged it down and the spindle motor, its mounts were cut right in half. And since then, he, he haven't jogged a robot. That's not really good because if it had gotten stuck in a tool change again and he was the only one who could do it, well, then you're, you're going to stand there either risking destroying the robot or having to wait for someone else to do it and I mean you lose a lot of production time so what can we learn from this well number one don't get cocky and even if you're experienced with robots uh, you should not think that you're you're some mastermind who knows where the robot is gonna go when you move the joystick. Number two, you should always orient yourself around the robot so you can know which way it's going to move and you have to know how to handle the controls. I think the first one is the one you get with the experience but the other two I will try to explain in this video. Okay, so first off when orienting yourself around the robot. You need to know what's the front and what is the back of the robot. It might sound like a dumb question, but we need to ask ourselves this before starting to jog the robot. In my experience, you should stand in the front of the robot. I don't know if there are any definitions of this, but I define the front of the robot as here. The cables are on the back of the robot. So I prefer to stand here. And this is where I will be referencing to when explaining in this video. Now that we are standing here at the front of the robot, we need to understand our controls. The most used control is the flex pendant when controlling an ABB robot. It's like a touchscreen and a joystick and a dead man switch in one package. And I probably can put up a picture here somewhere so you can understand, <laughs> not just from my, from my imagination. And first off, you might pick it up and it has a 
wrist strap that you can put your hand through and it will make it so that you don't mess up the controller and when you have entered it through the wrist strap your fingers are automatically placed on the dead man switch. A dead man switch is used on a lot of machines these days and uh, it's commonly used in trains so if the train driver have a heart attack the train will engage the brakes. One dead man switch I have used recently is on the lawnmower where on the handle you have like a lever and if you release it the engine will stop. These are on or off switch and the one on the flex pendant is quite special because it has three positions. One where you haven't pressed it, one where you have pressed it in halfway and one where you have pressed it too hard. It's only the middle one who arms the robot. And why would it be like this? Do you know? If you think about yourself, how do you react when you get scared? Or how would you react if you were would be jammed between the robot and maybe a wall? The thing is that people are, di are different and some may like curl up to a ball to defend themselves or they could release everything they have and hit something. One good example is, uh, it's quite a funny clip, where um, a granddaughter or something uh, honks on, uh, on the car while her grandmother is walking by and like, she like just froze <laughs> the milk jug. <laughs> That's uh, an example of someone who would release the switch, while some might tense up and press the switch more and if the robot is armed button lights up and stops blinking you have the dead man switch in the right position and if you're a guy you're probably used with having a monitor in your left hand and doing something else with your right hand right but uh, and it's the same with a flex pendant you will need to move a sort of joystick to move the robot. It has three different movements you can make. You can move it sideways, upwards and downwards, but you can also ro rotate the joystick. And that makes it so you can control three axes of the robot at a time, of the total six axes the robot has. First off you need to select the jogging window on the flex pendant and from here you can control many different things but the most important is what you are going to control. You can choose three axes at a time one to three or four to six. So here at the bottom right we can look at which direction on the joystick corresponds to which axis on the robot. Let's see what happens if we follow the arrow on axis 1. Did you see that? It rotates around the base. So that is axis 1. Let's do the same for the other two axes. So that's axis 1, 2 and 3. And you will probably not remember them now. And I sure did not remember these when I started with jogging a robot. But if you want to remember, you can think of them like your arm, right? Where each joint is an axis. They are numbered from the base to the tip. So if we were to number our arm, our shoulder would be axis number one, 
and number two would be our elbow and number three would be our wrist and then the other axis on our fingers. I will do the same for the other three axes that we have left. Thanks for watching and if you think that this series is of value to you then subscribe so you don't miss any episodes and you can also ask questions on reddit or on in the youtube comments and I don't have all the answers but it's good to have a discussion you learn a lot from it okay Goodbye.